<coughs> Maria here back with another video and I wanted to make another video because um, I was thinking a lot about people I've known and the fact that I feel a little disoriented because I'm shocked and I'm still going through a lot of shock and um, the fear is some people might think, well, gosh, you, know, you need to calm down. You need to just relax. It's very hard to relax when your life has been threatened by a big group of people. And, um, you know, and it's even more scary is the fact that your family initiated it over something that I think is really stupid. Um, I'm dealing a lot with that. Like, it's just constantly in the back of my mind, like, who are these people? Like, everybody I've known has turned out to be just evil. Like, like the most disgusting people I, I could ever imagine. And it's so funny. I mean, like, I understand what family scapegoating is. And they usually say that when you find out that you're a family scapegoat, you usually find out in your 30s or your, your 40s. So I'm, like, somewhere, you know, the right time, I guess. But, and, you know, of course the signs were always there, but... Still, I, I just never imagined people would be that low. To t attack your means of survival is the lowest thing you could ever do. Um, I, it is very strange, and I still will never fully understand it. I will never fully understand it. But um, uh, completely unjustified. And, and I do realize that everything that's happened to me in my past um, I can take responsibility for some of the things I've done. I mean, I, I, I'm a responsible person. But, you know, the things that happen in the play playground, you know, not saying all of it, but I do see that my family has been sabotaging my life for a very long time. And um, uh, it, it's very, it's creepy. It's a very creepy feeling. That's the only thing I, I can say. I, I can't expect these people, these people that I used to look at as family, to, um, to, uh, I, I, I can imagine how they get angry. If they see my videos, they're probably angry. Like, how dare she, or I wish she wouldn't be talking about this. But I, I don't think they realize just how severe it is. And, and it, to me, it is unforgivable. I cannot get over it. And, um, you know, the, the weirdest part is, is that I was a single parent. Now, they must have this issue against raising your kids, being single. Or maybe they just don't like the fact that I'm, I, I have stri I, I, I've tried to be independent. I've never wanted to live on any sort of assistance, and I've done everything I could to be self-supportive, okay? But what makes when I think about this, how they ruined my, my time in school when I was growing up, and then they tried to they sabotage my my uh, plans, my career plans, it's like these people, I'm so sorry I was born into that family. I, I can't tell you how disappointed I am in these freaks of nature. I, I seriously am just amazed that these people are so evil that they want to literally demolish my life to make sure that my life was miserable from the time that I came out of the womb to the time that I actually let, get laid down in the ground or I decide to go get cremated or something. These people have absolutely no, um, no uh, sense of right or what's wrong. And so, you know, I'm not saying that um, what I did in the past was right. Like, you know, I, I should have been just told my husband the truth, you know, after I met him and everything. But, you know, you, you know this person, so what do you do now, you know? Whatever the case is, I think it was blown way out of proportion. And it's obviously an excuse because, like I said, I can look back and I remember, you know, my job being sabotaged and my relationships being sabotaged in the past. So, that is weak. If they really cared about the issue, they would have confronted me to my face. But, um... You know, what they've done is created a social cancer in a, in, a, in a community that was already looking for reasons to not like me in the first place from the day I walked in here. So, anyway, <sighs> I am at peace with the fact that I now realize that my past is not something I could have 
controlled. It was beyond my control. And that is one thing that does give me gives me peace. But at the same time, it's very difficult for me to wrap my mind around the fact that my life is constantly going to be in jeopardy for the rest of my life. Um, I'm a target for the rest of my life. And so, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, am I going to, is, is going back to school even worth my time? Is it worth my time? I mean, I, I don't know anymore because what has happened to me has created a, a lot of evil in people. And even though they know that I'm not uh, guilty of anything, they know that I, I can prove it, okay? <laughs> I know that I haven't done anything wrong, but I'm still dealing with evil. Like, I can't call up certain agencies and get assistance when they are basically supporting the stalker, which that's very shocking to me. And these people are comp competing against me for reasons that I don't even understand. I never did anything to them. And... I, I, the, the, what bothers me, I mean, there's so many things that bothers me about this, but, you know, basically today what I was thinking about and dwelling on, and it's very hard for me to remove these things from my thoughts because it's extremely emotionally overwhelming, um, is that there are so many people who were evil in this that and, and willing participants in evil when they don't even know me. Now, I suspect that my sister got on Facebook and gathered around a bunch of people, like acquaintances that I used to know, and some of my so-called friends, so-called friends, and basically set of set off some sort of social, uh, you know, cancer or whatever. And these people jumped on it. Now, it makes you wonder why they would jump on it when you haven't seen them in so long, because there's evil. There's evil in them, and I, I really do believe that people are walking time bombs and they're looking for any excuse just to go off, okay? Um, I am a single, I was a single parent for many years, and I did everything I could to raise my kid in a way where we would not have to rely on government assistance, that I would be able to provide adequate shelter for my son and not have to rely on absolutely anybody. And that, to me, is a commendable thing. Um, and yet, my family, who I suspect, and this is the weird part, they suspected that I had mental problems, okay? So they're going to have some big Excel contest or career contest with somebody that they perceive to be retarded. Now, this is what I kind of find funny, because it, are they, is their self-esteem so goddamn low that they have to resort to such things? <laughs> You know, I, I'm serious. I'm looking at these people, and they are fucking pathetic. They are fucking pathetic. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty weird to me, you know. I, I'm just really, the only thing I can really say is that I'm grateful that um, my son is grown and he's on his own because had this happened to me when I was raising him as a child, this would have been devastating. Although, I'm sure she's been trying, uh, my family has been trying to, uh, make put me in a state of destitution for many many years, and they have they've succeeded in putting me in a very bad situation. And I'm very grateful that things are looking better. But I know that I have a lot of evil out there in the world because of them. And um, and you know, like I said, I never did anything to hurt anybody. But these people have been against me since the day I was born for whatever reason. And I, I have no control over that. Now, some people would think, well, gosh, you know, how come you don't ever hang out with people? You know, you know, it seems as though everybody that I've encountered must have been perps for a very long time because I never seem to be able to meet people where I gradually develop a relationship. It's always like, you know, I'll be talking and then they get intrusive, like, right away. And it's like, uh, they'll start asking me about my marriage and stuff. And it's like, whoa, you know, that, that's suspicious, you know. Um... So I wonder, you know, what what is will I ever be able to develop regular relationships now, or have they poisoned the waters for me completely? I mean, their foolishness to me is it's murderous. Okay, it's murderous, and um, I now realize that my sister Lisa um, has been doing this for many years. Like if I had, a, like I said, she would try to steal my friends. She she has always done that, and. I never realized her self-esteem was so low. I also am shocked, I'm very shocked at my sister, Tanya, because I always thought that Tanya 
was a little airheady, but I did believe that she tried very hard to serve God correctly. I can't. It's very difficult for me to deal with the fact um, that she's corrupt, and also um, and that she wears a mask. Okay, and her kids are raised to believe that they're wearing a mask is normal. Okay, I'm very grateful to say I am nothing like my family. Um, and then what really floored me was the lady I used to know. Her name was Ruth. Uh, I, I looked up to this woman. I thought she was the epitome, the epitome of what a true Christian was. I mean, every time I talked about Christianity, I would mention her name. I am now understanding that she is another one who wears a mask. And <laughs> she wears a mask. And, you know, it, it's not that. People might, you know, I, it seems like I've lost some subscribers because I don't identify, I don't say that I'm a Christian. I have nothing against Christianity or Christians, okay? It's just that I'm saying that a lot of corruption has entered the church, a lot of corruption um, because people really aren't sticking to, um, they're not really trying to live a, a good, productive lifestyle. And many of the people who go to church, they're going to church and they're listening to their pastors and the pastors are either expressing their own opinion or they're not, you know, sticking to scripture. And I'm, you know, I'm the kind of person, I'm open, I believe, uh, to me, everyone has the right to serve whatever, uh, be a part of whatever religion they want to be. But whatever you claim to be in this life, I believe you should, to, you should strive to live it and live it 100%. And if you find that you made an error, then you're, you have an obligation to the faith that you claim to be a part of to do that. Now, I'm very grateful in a lot of ways that I have not had a lot of social exposure. Like as far as me growing up kind of a loner is kind of a good thing because I personally think that that has what, what has given me what I like to say, and some people might think this is arrogant, but I believe I have superior morals. Uh, it's not to say that I've never done anything wrong. That's not to say I've never lied or I even there's times times in my in my past I would say my late te my teens and early twenties that I probably would have done something not quite this bad, okay? But I I probably would have been a backstabber. I probably backstabbed people in the back a long time ago. But once you realize um once you realize that something is wrong. You do what you can to correct it, and you don't do it again. Everybody makes mistakes, but to not learn from them is wrong. And for people who claim to be Christian, it's a sin. And after a while, it, you could be grieving the Holy Spirit. Um, so, you know, I, I, I am very disappointed in my family. And but and it also is it's very terrifying because... Um, you know, I, I anybody who puts you in this situation has placed your life in jeopardy. So I'm sitting here wondering, okay, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm already 45, and this has been going on for years. Now I'm going to say that my inability to break through in my career path is no fault of my own. Okay, it really is no fault of my own. I did everything I could to prove myself and work the hardest I could with whatever I had. And um, my, fa my family would have sabotaged it if I lived here. They would have sabotaged it if I lived in Georgia. If I moved to England, they would have done that too. Okay, not that that was my plan, but I'm just saying is wherever I went on the face of the earth, my family was going to make sure that I never did anything or I never had anything. And, you know, this kind of stuff does happen in families. It happens in families. And I used to recognize it in a lot of other families that I knew but I never recognized it in my own. Never recognized it. I was too busy, you know, either doing my own thing growing up or just, you know, you just don't expect that. You just, when you, your siblings treat you like shit, you know, that kind of stuff happens, you know. At least I thought it did, you know. I, I guess I didn't realize how extreme it was. But now that I put everything together, yeah, it totally makes sense. It, it makes total sense. But um, I'm very grateful to be the person that I am. I don't uh, want to, you know, the Bible talks about, like, for example, not to be a part, not being a part of the world. I have no interest in adapting to worldly standards, and I never will. I never will. Um, that's, you know, that's not to say that you're, you don't want to do things that the world does. Like, for example, I'm going to a concert um, next week, okay, Ziggy Marley. Um, 
I just had to throw that in there. But anyway, um, you know, I'm going there and I'm going to enjoy the entertainment, okay? So a lot of other people do those things. But when it comes to my moral standards, you know, like how I, I think about how it affects other people. And it, I am a very spiritual person. Now, I don't like to talk about my spirituality because I don't want to be like the people who are constantly talking about how they go to church and how they love Jesus and blah, 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 and they have blood on their hands, okay? I don't want to be one of those people. I just don't. But, um... Uh, I'm very grateful for that. And I do have a sense of spirituality that does bring me extreme peace. It really does. But, um, you, you know, and it's very difficult to find people who have the same moral standards as I do. And that is, it's the truth. I mean, it is. I mean, I can't tell you how many people throw each other under the bus all the time. Talk shit about each other behind their back and, and all this other stuff. It's like, no, man, that, it's it's just not for me, you know. Um, and a lot of people enjoy having, you know, a, a shitload of friends um, or acquaintances. But I prefer quality over quantity. And that's, that matters a lot to me. So, and I think that I'm a, a quality person. You know, I'm very devoted. Um, when people tell me, like, I, I was talking to some GIs today and... You know, some of these people are very doubted out. They don't have a significant other. They don't have anybody to talk to. And I know that these people are broken, and I would never abandon them. I would never do that. What my family did is they threw me into this, you know. I mean, I, there's dirt that I have on my brother, for example, that could ruin his reputation. I would never do something like that to my brother. I wouldn't. And I want him to understand, you know what, um... I, uh, I can't even imagine <laughs> why somebody would want to destroy somebody's ability to take care, especially when you're a single parent. That is evil. It is inexcusable. I cannot overlook that. I can't. I can't overlook it. To me, it's like that says not only somebody would they care of, that they don't care about me, but they don't care about my son. And, and I don't care how you look at it, how you slice it, it to me, the blame goes on my family. So I can't say that my mom's completely innocent in this. I mean, she she was supposed to do her job in raising her bratty kids, <laughs> her bratty kids. And and uh, you know, when you parents turn blind eyes to this sort of behavior, they're responsible. And you know, just her voicing her opinion about how she was you know pregnant, she didn't want another kid, and she had me anyway. Um, that that does set off you know this pack mentality, you know, within kids, you know, and so I hold my family 100% responsible. Now, I will say that there were some great things about living with my family, like being raised in that family. Like, I think that I have a great taste of music, in, of music because I was raised in that family. I mean, I had, they were always listening to music, all kinds of music, and I mean, I listened to it, and it was like, I absorbed it, you know, so it did open, you know, certain pathways for me, you know, that I appreciate, that I would have not had, had I was raised in another family, had I been raised in another family, but, um, as far as these people, like, I, I would never model myself after them, I, I would never say that I admired them or would strive to be like them, I, I just don't have any, val I don't, at this point, I, I used to respect them just because they were my blood, okay? I didn't really know them as adults, but I would respect them, and I would have fought for them, and I would have defended them just because they were my blood, okay? I wouldn't give them doodly squat, <laughs> right? At this point, I wouldn't give them anything at all. So anyway, for whatever reason, my camera is, um, you know, cutting short. Usually I have, like, 27 minutes. It's giving me, like, 20 minutes. Countdown, I got, like, a, a minute and 42 seconds left. But anyway, basically today what my was dwelling on, and it's very hard for me to get my mind off of this, uh, was the fact that, um, you know, my life was an illusion. Like, I was, you know, blind to the fact, open, my mind was completely open to other, other issues, but I was blind to the fact that my family was trash. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I do remember talking to somebody who was fairly well-versed in psychology, and they were saying that it's very difficult for people to apply psychology to uh, their own families, and I will say that that's really true, because people know me as knowing people. I mean, I know people. I can tell bullshitters when I see them. I just know that, you know, but um, 
I, I would never, I knew that my, my, my family was a little bit, you know, they were just different, okay, but bloodthirsty, like, manipulative, evil people, I had no fucking idea. I'm blown away. Wrapping up this video, um, for all the other TIs, you know, if you're wondering who's destroying your life, don't be surprised if it's one of your family members, okay, because it's more common than you think. A lot of uh, people in business, they think that, you know, they have authority over you because they're your family members when they really don't, okay? So it's quite easy for family members to trick and manipulate so-called professional people. But really, the ultimate responsibility lies on the so-called professional people because they're supposed to have the adequate training to know better. Anyway, wrapping up this video, have a good night. Take care. Bye-bye.